Welcome to the Vegas Knights Socks Knit Along. Now these are two at a time, cuff down, no heel, super easy, one ball of yarn. First I wanna go over pattern and supplies. This yarn is called Painted Sky, and the color that I'm using is Grand Canyon. In case you haven't guessed by now, the inspiration for these socks came from a recent trip that I took to Vegas. So I kind of have a little bit of Vegas theme going on here, and I thought it was only appropriate that the color name of the yarn is called Grand Canyon. Um, we're doing two at a time, cuff down, magic loop. It's a lot of words, but it's really great for the adventurous beginner. You really need to know how to knit and how to purl already. Um, I will be showing you a couple other little easy things. Um, keep in mind that we do have a stitch support section on our YouTube channel, and we'll put a link up above to the playlist so you can go in there and check it out if there's something in the pattern that you're just not quite sure of or want a refresher or maybe I didn't uh, go over it clearly enough for you because really what I want to do is get down to the meat and potatoes of this whole project so that you have a great idea of how to make these socks. Now this yarn is a worsted weight yarn. This pattern is a little bulkier than normal socks because these are bed socks. You're going to wear them to keep your feet warm at night. Um, it's not something you're going to want to put a tennis shoe on top of. Maybe Crocs, but not a tennis shoe. The wool content, it's 100% wool and it is Super wash, so you can throw them in the washing machine. Australian virgin wool. Um, it's a great texture, great to work with. We're also using a US size six knitting needle. Circular because we're doing magic loop, so you want a really long cord. Um, I would suggest a 40. You could maybe get away with a 32, but your wrists will thank you for a 40. Um, and of course, if you already know how to knit with double pointed needles, you could knit one sock at a time. I wouldn't suggest doing two on double points. You really want to use a circular needle for that. But you do have options. Feel free to play around. Okay, one ball of yarn, two socks, and one needle. How do we make this work? Well, I'm going to show you how to cast on. We have, thankfully, this one is already wound into a ball for us we have a center pull ball, and I just had it. There we go, that's a center pull ball. That's where your active yarn comes from, the center of your ball. We also have yarn that comes from the outside of the ball. Are you getting where I'm going with this? We have two socks that we're making with one ball of yarn. We have two strands of yarn. Ah, yes, sock one from the inside of the ball, sock two from the outside of the ball, it does Take some yarn control as you work along. If you have a yarn ball that, uh, a yarn bowl, that might be helpful. Um, if not, just be aware of how the yarn is coming off of the ball. You have this center one. This one comes around this way. You don't want them to tangle up like that because then you'll be sitting there spinning and unspinning. Just be careful and watch, and you can pull this off without them spinning together. Just a little tip there. Okay, so yarn management, key number one for knitting these two at a time. Casting on. Now, on our website at onebighappy.com, we have the kits already there for you. It has the yarn in the printed pattern. You'll wanna follow along because that'll give you more detailed instructions on the process of this. These socks that I made are a medium size, so um, feel free to adjust within the pattern for a larger size if you need it. If you need a little help with that, you can always leave a comment down below and we'll get back to you. And we have our um, Facebook group that's called the One Big Happy Yarn Company Makers. Join us there, there's tons of people. We have over 600 members there, so we're all happy to help and answer questions. But let's get started. So what do I mean by two at a time? Well, basically we're gonna be knitting both of these socks at the same time on one knitting needle. So let me show you how that's done. We are gonna be using what is called a stretchy cast on. And what this does is it allows stretch to the cuff. Because I don't know about you, but for me, I have kind of thicker calves and I don't like them to be tight around my calf. These are a tube sock, there's no heel, so they just slide right on. So we want them to be 
really stretchy. And also, I think it looks great with this pattern because you don't have a solid ridge like you get with a long tail cast on around the edge. It's very, very stretchy. So I can't wait to show you how to do this stretchy cast on. Each sock has 48 stitches all the way around. However, when we go to cast on, we're gonna only cast on half of the stitches for the first sock, then we'll cast on all the stitches for the second sock and be back to the second half of the first sock. It sounds a little confusing, but just watch, I'll show you. Is it? This, there's gonna be a lot of just watch and see on here. Okay, first thing I'm gonna do, slip knot like I always do, wrap it around, go under and through. That's so hard. Wrap it around your index finger, go down, around, and through. And we'll do this 24 times. And again, I'm pulling this from the center of my ball of yarn. Okay, let's go back. It's 5, 10, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. Okay, so that is the first half of sock one. Now we're going to cast on for sock two. So we want to go to the yarn that we have out here. Look, I made a mess when I was showing you how to pull there. Okay, now we're going to cast on for sock number two. And I'm going to show you the same thing again. Slip knot. So index finger. Swoop down and around and through. We'll do this. Now we're going to be casting on a total of 48 stitches here, but I'm going to be casting on 24 and then I'm placing a stitch marker and I'll show you why I do that. Okay, so I have 24 stitches cast on. I'm going to place my stitch marker here. This is the, the center or the halfway point of sock number two. It's Ditch marker there. Now I'm going to cast on another 24 stitches. One, two, three. Okay, so I have, okay, so I have 24 stitches here. Sock number one, first half inside a ball. I have 24 stitches here. Sock number two, first half outside of the ball. I have my stitch marker marking that middle area. Then I have 24 stitches. Sock two outside of the ball. Now, I'm going to pull this to my cord. Okay, so here's the center of my second sock. I'm going to pull my stitch marker and divide these stitches and pull. Watch this end. You don't want to accidentally, that, yeah, you'd have to start over if you accidentally pulled your needle through. So watch that end. Give yourself some slack over here. Now, those of you that have knit Magic Loop before, use Magic Loop, this is going to look very familiar. We're going to turn, again, yarn control. There we go. Okay. I'm going to get everything back in place where it's nice and pretty. Make sure I'm not twisted, which happens. Especially I'm one of those people that I move around a lot. So, yeah, I'm always checking to make sure I'm not twisted. That's a theme with me. I like the word twisted. Okay. So originally these socks were titled twisted, but I have the other twisted socks. I didn't want to get them to confused. So at the very last minute, and everybody's ready to pull their hair out with me, last night, very last minute, I changed the name. <laughs> but they are inspired from my trip to Vegas, so it's appropriate. Okay. Here we go. Now this... Looks familiar for your magic loop. However, there's a little bit of a difference and I wanna show you that up close again. This is sock number two, this is sock number one. Um, that's a tail. Like normally when you're in this position for magic loop, you have active yarn, but I don't. My active yarn is down here because if we look at it this way, that's where we finished casting on 
or that's where we started. That's where we ended to start the second one. Just bear with me. It makes sense here in just a second. What I need to do is cast on another 24 for sock number one. So this is the second side of sock number one, another 24 stitches onto this needle over here. So to do that, it looks a little crazy, but bear with me here. I'm gonna hold it like this, so I turned it again. I'm in position, go around and through, and just kind of let it hang out there. That first one is gonna look a little weird. It's okay. Just keep going, and then it'll start making sense and looking correctly. Now, you are welcome, if you have another cast-on method that you like, you are welcome to use any cast-on method that you like that is set up for two at a time. The, the theme is still the same. You cast on half of sock number one stitches, cast on all of sock number two stitches, then cast on the second half of sock number one. And that's all wrote, written out in the pattern. Okay, I've got five. Now we're gonna come back here. Make sure everything is where it's supposed to be. Nothing's twisted. That's down where it's supposed to be. It's down there. Okay, let's just set this down and take a moment to appreciate what this looks like. Sock number one, sock number two. So one of the things that I want to point out right away, and it's really easy to see when you look at these two, they don't match exactly. All the colors are the same, but the pattern is a little bit different. And that's because I'm pulling one sock from the inside of the ball and one sock from the outside of the ball. And the die pattern is like backwards on one instead of the other. If you want, you could rewind your ball into two balls and match up where the color repeat starts on both of them. If you start in the same place in the repeat pattern, both socks will be the same. You may have to make them an, a little tiny bit shorter than what I have here to get that to match up, but it should be pretty close because these two really matched up fairly well as opposites. <laughs> okay, so here we are, and this is what it looks like. You've got sock one, sock two. Now, I did not put a beginning of the round stitch marker on my needle when I, and I usually don't put it on my needle when I'm knitting in Magic Loop because the tails are on the end, that's the beginning. But here is where you would put a beginning of the round marker if you wanted to, to help keep you on track. Um, I just find it fussy because it falls off and flies across the room and I lose it and everything. So I just keep in mind, this is my tail, this is the beginning of my round. Also, my same tip so that I don't accidentally start picking up and start knitting with my tail. A little slip knot will keep you there. Now, you ready for this? The cuff. It is a so simple knit one, purl one, all the way around both socks. I'm going to go one round to show you how we transition between the two socks and keep them separate as we work from the inside and the outside of the ball. Uh, but if you do need more detailed information, again, we have our stitch support videos, and there is one out there that'll walk you through that a little bit uh, slower. Okay, I had it flipped. You want your working yarn in the back, tail in the front. That'll let you know where you're coming from. You want to double check, as with always when you're knitting in the round, to make sure all of your um, insides are pointing together. You don't want to twist in there. We are on sock number one, and we are doing the cuff, so I'm going to bring this around. Always when you're working magic loop, whether you're doing two at a time or a hat or any time you're working in the round, you want to make sure that your working yarn does not go under your cord. You want it up and above, otherwise you'll get an accidental yarn over and what that does is it puts a hole in it where you don't want it to have a hole. Okay, knit one, purl one. Now with the stretchy cast on, you don't have that base stitch under there like you do in like the long tail cast on. 
So you can slide and manipulate the size of your stitch that's on your needle. If it's a little bit tight and you're having a hard time getting your needle through there, you can tug on it a little bit and it'll open that up. Knit one, purl one, knit one, purl one. Now I'm gonna go ahead and continue 24 stitches, sock one this way. So I've got a knit and then a purl. And that is the first 24 stitches on sock one. Now I really would need to be careful that I do not start picking up this yarn and knitting for sock two. Otherwise I'll knit my two socks together and I don't know what that would be. Bunny ears maybe. Okay, sock two. Very simple to how we knit sock one. Actually, exactly the same way, except for you're kind of forgetting these are hanging out over here. And you just start your pattern here. Make sure that your yarn is up here like this, doesn't get wrapped around that cord. If it gets wrapped around that cord, again, you're going to have a oopsie. Okay, knit one, purl one continue on through these 24 stitches and again because we use the stretchy cast on there's no base stitch to it like you're used to if you're used to the long tail cast on so it is a little finicky your first time around but I promise you after you get that first round of stitches on both socks it gets so much easier to knit in and you can speed up. But I like to go slow this first round just to seat these stitches properly. One of the things that I also want to point out, the stretchy cast on, because it doesn't have a base stitch, these stitches move around. I have this right here. Don't worry about that. It will work its way back in. I'm going to pull this stitch here. I need to purl it. Oh, bring yarn forward to purl. I'm going to go ahead and purl that it will work its way back into the sock. It looks a little scary when you see this long bar of yarn, but that's normal. Okay, so I finished the 24th stitch on the second sock. Now, here's the careful part. You may just wanna grab your cord and pull. Not, not a good idea. I get started with pushing first, and then hold on to your tip tight. And the reason why is so many times I have just pulled the cord and all of my stitches have slid right off that needle. So hold that tip tight when you're pulling on your cord or feed it through. Um, but yeah, don't just yank. Okay. Now, oh, let me show you what I did. Now, I'm looking at it this way. This is sock number one. I just finished the second half of sock number two. Now I turn. And I'm ready. Now this is like standard magic loop setup right here. Look at this. I'm keeping this guy way over here. This is sock number one. I don't need him right now. But I do need to make sure that my yarn is not twisting from my ball because this one is coming from the outside. So now I'm ready to start the second half of sock number two on the cuff, the ribbing. Okay. So again, I want to make sure that this yarn is up and out of the way when I pull my cord because it gets wrapped around. I know I'm kind of harping on that, but I had it happen recently and it took me forever to figure out what did I do? So kind of like to point those out. Okay, so I ended with a purl. Now this one's gonna be a knit. I still have this right here, but as soon as I put my needle into this, look, what, look what's gonna happen. It cinches that up. So don't worry about it. Okay. Knit, purl all the way around, go to Vegas, enjoy the shows, enjoy the people watching. Um, you Once you get this set up, like literally I walked around Fremont Street and if you've never been to Vegas, Fremont Street is very interesting. I did a lot of people watching, but I also was being watched because I'm walking around knitting. I actually had a valet driver stop me and say, I have worked in Vegas for 10 years, and this is the first time I've seen somebody stand there and knitting. <laughs> so, hey, I got to be a first in Vegas, right? 
Anyway, thank you so much for joining me for episode one of Vegas Nights, two at a time, tube socks knitted from the cuff down. And join me in the next episode when we'll go into the pattern, finish up the toe, and finish off these socks. Thank you, happy knitting.